Tim, welcome to Watch Want, and thanks for logging on. But first, a message from our sponsor. It runs longer to be sure, but I just wanted to give you a brief sample on a small wind of this Jezer LeCoultre Master Compressor Memovox 41.5mm in polished stainless steel. You can see this JLC Master Compressor Memovox on our website, WatchYouWant.com, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch you Want Inc. Now, I've been away for a few days, but I guarantee you I haven't missed a beat, neither will this JLC Master Compressor Memovox. Part of a memorable series built from 2002 to about 2008, this watch defined the JLC sports watch for the early 21st century. It has hints of the vintage Polaris, but at the same time, it's very much its own timepiece, not a tribute watch in any sense. You can see 15 millimeters thick, it sits nice and even on the wrist, not too thick, it's certainly not up there in Hublot King Power territory, but it's got nice body to it. 41.5 millimeters across the round portion of the case. It's a nice burly 50 millimeters from lug to lug, so although it's not a huge oversized watch in bare terms, with the 50 millimeter span, it does fill out a large wrist, so it never looks like a 41, 42. It actually reads as a, I would say, a 43 or a 44 on the wrist. In terms of heft, it's very satisfying, not just because it has these burly, deep, heavily sculpted lugs, but because on the case back, it's both solid for extra sturdy construction, watertight integrity, and actually a little bit of extra heft, but the inclusion of an 18 karat rose gold master compressor 1000 hour control medallion inset within that case back adds a lot of real as well as aesthetic value. Now the watch is built sturdy. I mean, this is one of the first JLC sports watches since the 1970s. After the Polaris II of 1970 to about 1975, you didn't see too many JLC sports references, and it really wasn't until the compressors arrived in 2002 with this compressor Memovox that JLC got back into the sports watch game, and they came back with a bang, a feature both practical and distinctive. The compressor crowns really define the look of this case. The compressor crowns, and I would say the very deep, heavily sculpted, massive lugs, but the crowns themselves, one half turn, and you have 100 meter water resistance, that's 330 feet for those of you in the old colonies like myself, but a half turn, and now it's unlocked. And the great thing here is, because the toroidal seals underneath the compressor crowns aren't actually subjected to the threading of a conventional screwed in, screwed out crown, they don't get worn down as you compress and decompress them with the compressors. Moreover, you have these wing nuts outboard of the compressor keys themselves that make the watch easy to use when you're wearing gloves, when your hands are wet, when your hands are sweaty. So there's not that fumbling with screw down crowns that you often get when you're actually using them in active or sporting applications. Plus, they're color coded. Red, you're dead. Now the watertight integrity is compromised, but you can wind the watch and set the time. Red, you're dead, and then a half turn, white, you're tight. Now you have 100 meter water resistance and you're good to go. Now this is a true dive watch. In addition to being an alarm and quite a valuable one at that, it has an internal rotating dive bezel. So much like the old super compressor cases used on the Polaris among others during the 1960s, you have that secure internal rotating bezel. Many have asked why there isn't a compressor key on this bezel crown at 10 o'clock and the reason for that is that there is no translational stress on this seal. You don't pull this crown out and push it in. If it did have that kind of stress on it, it would need the additional security granted by the compressor crown, but because it only turns, it doesn't move in and out, it doesn't require the extra hermeticity granted by the compressors. Now the dial itself is a mix of old and new. Along the lines of the new, we have the broad apertures that were really characteristic of the JLC sports watch designs of the 2000s, part of the Magali Metrier designs. She was a young woman in her 20s, put in charge of all JLC men's watch design, which is basically saying she was the franchise for about 10 years. Her designs were considered to be a bit French, a bit extrovert, definitely off the beaten path for a brand that had become a little bit stodgy and conservative, and they reinvigorated the company under CEO Jerome Lambert. In fact, they've held up so well that even 13 years after we first saw this watch, it still looks fresh, it still looks contemporary, and it still looks remarkably original. You can see shades of the old Polaris 1968 dial in here in the shape of the numerals, the indices, the 
bidirectional ring naturally has little echoes of the old super compressor internal ring, but the hands being broad trapeze shaped, as well as the large aperture for setting the alarm, and I'll show you how that works, are entirely unique to the master compressor Memovox. Now you see you just set the watch to whatever time you want it to go off, and then you press the crown, and of course you wind the alarm using this crown right here at 2 o'clock. So it's a little bit of old, a little bit of new. It has a beautiful dial that actually has a lot of gloss, reflectivity, and texture, and visual interest. Outstanding loom at night. This is actually a surprisingly lively dial. It's not the dower dive watch by any means. This has a lot of visual interest. And inside, it's everything you'd expect of a JLC. Caliber 918, this one was born in the early 1980s. A derivative of the 1969 to 1982 JLC 916. That was a historic movement because it was the first time JLC combined a rotor automatic winding with an alarm as well as a 4 hertz or 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate. Well, the 918 continues that, but it steps up the jewel count from 17 to 22, and it upgrades the alarm from a post mounted in the case back that essentially produced a chirping cricket sound in the 916 to the bright resonating ringtone that you heard at the beginning of this video. It has a lot of sustain, a beautiful bright tone, and plenty of volume to wake you up if you do want to use this watch as an alarm clock, and if you're using it as a diving alarm, even better. Now, it does still have a modern 4 hertz beat rate. You can see when I pull the crown, the watch does hack, so you can set the time precisely with the stop seconds feature. It has about a 45 to 48 hour real world power reserve. Nice, efficient bi-directional winding. This isn't one you can feel or hear winding. It's very smooth in that respect. And because it is adjusted in six positions and it goes through the JLC 1000 hours control process, it is built to chronometer standards. Not a chronometer, but this watch can easily keep those timing tolerances because of the degree of adjustment and inherent quality within the components themselves. This is an outstanding modern classic. A watch that hasn't yet passed into the realm of vintage, but is already beginning to build a collector following online and among the connoisseurs of lower volume, under the radar, emerging classics. This is a great watch to wear and enjoy now with none of the drawbacks of a true vintage watch, but at the same time, it has the potential to become an icon of its era, a great reference in the history of its manufacture, and a true classic in an objective sense. You can see this Jezier Lecoultre's Master Compressor Memovox Diving Alarm on our website, watchyouwant.com.